Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Faded La Vintage. I'm Colleen. Um, today I just dropped off some donations to the local um, thrifty shopper, which is run by the Rescue Mission. Um, and now I'm going to go inside and shop a little bit. This is a relative, this is a new location. Um, I think I've took you through here maybe once before. So let's go inside and see what I can find to resell on eBay or head to my own collection. Saw these Christmas plates, thought they were super cute. I just loved how graphic they were and the color to them, but I didn't see a whole lot of resale value, so I left them behind. Portuguese pottery can do quite well online, but for some reason, I don't know if it was this brand or this pattern, uh, comps weren't really there for them. Uh, there was none sold in the past three months, so I did decide to leave them behind as because of the damage as well. I saw this picture. I thought it was old. I got really excited, and I walked up to it, picked it up, still thinking it was old, looked at the bottom. It was modern. I was so disappointed. I didn't even look up comps, didn't even try to figure out the brand. I just left it behind. <laughs> I always look at Christmas Village items because some brands in some shapes can do very well. Department 56 is a name to look out for, um, but this one had a lot of chipping and it was unbranded, so I left it. Cracked eggs are always very classic, but this one had a lot of damage and a huge old candle inside of it, so I left it behind. That looked like Majolica. I picked it up, super excited, looked at the bottom, it's a reproduction. Two's company. But if I had taken the time to look it up, I would have seen that that particular picture does sell approximately for $25 online. So even though it's a reproduction, it does have resale value. This little plate, I suspect, was either Japan or Nippon, but hand-painted, but it was broken, so I left it. Nice, heavy, um, most likely Asian import um, votive holder. Also left that. This is the base to a Westmoreland fairy lamp. I looked through this store high and low for the top to it. Couldn't find it anywhere, but I did end up taking the base home. These are really cool mid-century modernist um, candle holders from Denmark. These, unfortunately, were super popular back in the day, and they don't have a high resale value, so I left them together for somebody to find them a new home. <laughs> and these candlesticks were really cool, so I figured I'd just show them to you, even though they were broken and I didn't buy them. But I loved the branch. Like, I thought that was just such a cool effect. It would have looked awesome for Christmas. But they were both quite broken, and not even in the same place, and it would have been awkward to repair them, so I left them behind. I thought this was possibly um, some more pottery, but it was just a mass-produced piece, so I left it behind. And there's a ginger jar lid, most likely a blue geisha ware. This looked like Italian pottery to me, uh, a Salvador that might have been Spanish, now that I'm thinking about it. But uh, as I looked it over, it did have a crack in the handle. So even though you do want to take a look at these pieces for resale, and they can be really cool, it just, I couldn't take that because of the damage. This one was a really pretty picture, but it was just... I wasn't sure how well <laughs> the painting was. Like, it had great form, but it just wasn't very, like, crisp. I thought this might have been Italian, but flipping it over, it was mass-produced in China. So I did end up leaving it behind. And I did take the Westmoreland. All right. So right now I am in my truck sitting outside of a little, of a good sized antique mall in Fulton, New York. It's called Flippin' Unique Antiques. And I try to remember, I don't think I've taken you guys in here before. So I'm going to go inside, ask for permission to film and I'll see you then.
All right, so in the first booth, they did mainly jewelry, but I did see a couple of really cute little bowls and dishes, uh, so I took a quick peek at those. But unmarked and at $5, I just, I wasn't sure, and I'm trying to be really picky. They did look older, but I wasn't really sure about those, so I left them behind. A lot of really fantastic jewelry, though. I just didn't have a lot of time to really look through it today. And I, I'm not very knowledgeable with jewelry either, so I, I tend to avoid it. But beautiful decor in here. Just looking around, um, there's some painted furniture. Um, a lot of primitive stuff. Um, there, in Fulton, there's a bit of a mix between kind of city and country. So you see a lot of primitives and still a lot of the, um, the farmhouse um, decor that's still in style around here. And the jadeite, I did take a peek at it. Um, here we go. <clears throat> so I saw this bunny first. Took a look at that. But... Um, at that price, I think it was about retail, so I did leave that behind, even though it was cute and with the pink glass. Uh, it was unmarked, too. Um, this JD down here is vintage, but it was very damaged. There's a lot of dishwasher damage on that, so I just... I have made a few mistakes recently with buying glass that I thought I could clean, but it turns out I couldn't. <laughs> <clears throat> so I have been avoiding glass that looks cloudy, damaged, um, dirty in general, unless I was sure I could clean it. So a lot, here's a bit of Pyrex wall for you. Um, this dealer had quite a bit of Pyrex, uh, Gorgeous textiles, a lot of yellowware, uh, antique and vintage mixing bowls. Um, I saw this really cute little pink tumble up that was missing the cup. I've actually bought and sold that one before. I'm unsure of the brand though. <laughs> I looked everywhere, couldn't find it when I when I came across that previously. It's really beautiful color um, uh, canister set. And there are a few contemporary pieces kind of mixed in with the vintage to kind of give this whole look. Um, I tend not to gravitate a lot towards the primitives, um, unless they're kind of for myself. But I don't have a lot of primitives in my home either. But it's something I grew up a lot with, and so I do have an appreciation for it. Like McCoy. I absolutely love McCoy. It's a little bit more polished, and those were right at retail, so I left those behind. Um, but I have a huge love of McCoy, and I have quite a bit of a collection as well. So these were really great pieces. I was very tempted by them. The bamboo, I was a little weird, I was a little curious about. That's not a pattern that I was really familiar with, but it wasn't actually a McCoy that I could tell. So I did leave that behind. Some really neat pieces. And those are really cute, but I believe they're contemporary salt and pepper shakers. Um, little boots with, uh, there's bees and butterflies. So I thought they were really cute, but not necessarily something I would resell. Got the ro wooden rooster canisters. These were pretty neat. Um, I'm trying to remember who made them, and I don't believe they were marked. But, let me see. There's some mixing bowls, and I really liked these, the Syracuse set. It is restaurant wear, but I don't really know the retail on these pieces, so I did leave them behind. That is a slipware and I thought that was really cool but I I didn't know the brand I didn't know the value I doesn't really go with my house so I left it behind <laughs> and now opening up the cabinet here to take a quick peek there's another set of that same pattern 
restaurant wear. And then up in the top, they had some Fiesta, and they had the mugs up there, and then plates and bowls down below. And this was a neat bowl, but I realized it was false craft. I was not expecting that when I went to turn it over. I had never seen that basket pattern. Um, then just kind of out of curiosity, seeing what they had their Fiesta at, which is good prices, um, but not something I would pick up for resale. Um, my mom collects some um, Fiesta as well as the Riviera, um, or sorry, not Riviera, the Harlequin pattern, which is very similar to Fiesta, and it's from the same manufacturer, um, Homer Laughlin. So there's some more Pyrex. Um, this little, um, these are actually Fenton salt and pepper shakers. They're unmarked, so they're like 1970s or earlier. And those were actually right at retail, so I did leave those behind. I've bought and sold those before. I like the look and color of that vase, um, but I do have a similar corner wall pocket um, at home already in my inventory that hasn't sold yet so I decided to leave that one there and my eye got att really attracted to these mugs up top um barrel mugs are something that several um companies did but I'd never seen them in pastel colors so I took a peek at those um, and <laughs> Jeffy's looking at me and the boys who saw Bigfoot, I just thought those were hilarious. So I was really tempted to take home some books to that day, but I actually, I got distracted and I didn't actually go back for them. Um, but there, you can see the huge variety of things in this um, antique mall with the, between the different vendors. Uh, coming over here around the corner, I saw the shelf full of planters and fr flower frogs so I had to take a peek here because who doesn't love planters and fr flower frogs um I didn't really see much until I went down into here these are both actually McCoy vases unmarked this one was a bit of a rare piece um not a super high retail value but it is a hard shape to come across and being unmarked but mccoy it's kind of tough but i was really excited at that price point so i did take that home even with the glaze issues this one um it is a much larger piece it is also a i believe it's a brush so not necessarily mccoy but at that price point and with the chip in the base i decided to leave behind the mauve but i definitely um, purchased the yellow and over here at these salt and pepper shakers these birds really caught my eye um as you can see though there is damage to the tail on this one it was repaired I ended up leaving them behind but I <laughs> they stuck in my brain and I ended up researching them later on they are glidden pottery and actually a really hard pattern to come across. Um, so the value of them, I have really no idea. So that's why I didn't like run back and purchase them after finding out they were glidden pottery. So if anybody knows more about those, please let me know in the comments. Um, or you can go right to Fulton in Unique Antiques and, or flip in Unique Antiques and they will grab it for you. And yet another unmarked McCoy piece this picture I actually saw on the McCoy Pottery group on Facebook very recently. And um, it is an unmarked McCoy piece, but it actually doesn't retail for a whole lot because it's, it's not a very trendy style right now. There is a lot of love for that shape and like in cottage core or something along those lines, a very soft traditional home, like... They would look beautiful, but like what's really big right now is the 1940s kind of shapes that are very classically McCoy and that one unfortunately isn't. And you can see there's some tin types and old photos, uh, which can be very popular. People love those. I'm, I get weirded out 
having people I don't know stare at me all day so I tend not to put those in my house <laughs> I, I don't find them endearing it, it's a little weird for me but I'm making my way over to vendor number one in this back room I was super excited that everything was 25% off because this vendor has some really nice stuff and I usually can never afford to bring anything home for retail because it's always just beyond what I was willing to pay for for flipping um oh, that bleak owl I forgot to look at him while I was there he's so cool I didn't see him I got overwhelmed and I didn't grab them and there's actually some perfume bottles in the case that I was going to record and show you but I I got distracted and <laughs> I ended up not but I did focus in on this Jack in the Pulpit vase super cool um with the blue base with the oxblood opening um I believe it's only like $35 so I was super tempted to take it but when I actually had the case opened it was repaired so I didn't end up leaving it behind um this piece was really interesting it looked like it had some age too and I really liked the shape um but at $20 I really I wish I would have known the maker uh that way I could have looked up comps but it doesn't really go with my home but that's so that's why I left it and then back in the the next door section which is in a different storefront but still attached um is a whole nother area which has a completely different feel to it uh, a lot of mantiques in this front area and up there you can actually see uh, Utica Club beer steins um, Dooley and Schultz are the names of the original ones and then there's a lot of spin-off ones from those and but all by for Utica Club and those are extremely collectible um, especially in central New York where everybody knew Utica Club or had a grandpa who drank it <laughs> And I took a quick peek at these two bowls, um, but they didn't really wow me. So even at $5, I was, I was torn if I should pick them up or not. But um, the opalescent had a little bit of damage on the base. And the carnival glass one, just being a plain marigold, I just, I was being picky. And I decided to leave it behind. So over around here, um, really cute booth right there, but I'll come back to it. But I wanted to finish out this row first. Again, some more painted furniture that's super in right now. Um, I saw these two, uh, I, I had a hard time figuring out if they were bowls or plates, uh, but they were hand painted in 1915 and... I believe the other one said 1916 and they're both five dollars each but i was really tempted to pick them up but uh the painting was although pretty well done it was a little sloppy i was very tempted to pick them up though because they were beautiful these are really interesting they're actually um european enamelware pieces and they're really ornate um this vendor has quite the collection of them here and they're all priced i mean i wish i knew more about them because i'm honestly not sure how well priced they were but they're really cool looking i mean just look at all those patterns and colors they're fantastic all these coffee pots I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good price or not. And with the double um, 170 at 175 they're just so neat. And they are metal. So they do have like the enamel coating on them. And they're just all in fantastic shape too. There's some Crocs. And then turning around... There's a lot of buttons right there. Lowly buttons. <laughs> and then a whole bunch of toothpick holders, which I will come back to those in just a minute. But I got distracted um, with these paperweights. Now, 
The price of this very much surprised me when I picked it up and turned around. Um, but after looking up comps, after getting home, I did... It made me realize I know nothing about paperweights. <laughs> the pricing for them is kind of all over the place. Uh, the antique ones can do quite well. Um, the appraising stickers I was a little confusing because it says what they were appraised for. But they, they didn't say who they were attributed to unless that's that Campbell. But they said what date they were from. But... Uh, unless there's a signature underneath all the stickers, I'm really not sure. But um, if anybody knows anything about paperweights, um, let me know in the comments if those <laughs> if I should go back for those or not. <laughs> um, I did also notice these little wooden boxes, and um, they were really neat, and especially with the ones with the inlay. I don't know much about them, but they really held my attention. I thought they were super pretty, and I was very tempted to pick up at least one, but I just, I don't know anything about them. So even though I was extremely attracted to them, I did leave them behind. I didn't purchase any because I couldn't tell if they were older pieces or if they were contemporary pieces especially with the the little heart burned in some of them that made me think it was a contemporary piece by a current artist uh, because she this person had a few that were marked with that heart this one was kind of neat just just little like like a ring box or earring boxes or i'm not even sure what else you would put in there <laughs> they're so small um, but I do know uh, after a quick search online that some boxes by certain artists can do quite well, especially when they are antiques. But it's, again, I don't know enough about it to really kind of deep dive into them. But let me see, what was it called? Treeware is, um, is the term that the person used. So I wanted to see if any of these were uranium or Vaseline and not a single one glowed out of the whole bunch. I couldn't believe it. Um, but looking through, the prices on these were actually fantastic and I was tempted to just clear them right out, but I'm not prepared for that kind of volume at the moment, especially with toothpick holders, which are notorious for being slow sellers. I did purchase this one, though. Uh, this is a Made in Murano piece, and it's a peach blow. There is a small chip on the edge, the top edge, that I didn't notice when I purchased it, though. And let me see. I also grabbed... Let me see. I left this one behind. I couldn't tell it's a manufacturer on it. There was a lot of Imperial, there was a lot of Westmoreland, Dugenhart, Boyd. Um, this one, I believe, is Kanawa. I've had that one previously. I did purchase this one as well, which is a Czech Bohemian piece, which is a milk glass that's cut to reveal the cased ruby. This one, I was really tempted to pick that one up, but I did end up leaving that Boyd one behind, and I grabbed, um, there's a red, a uh, blue Dugenhart cauldron toothpick holder that I ended up picking up that I don't believe I showed. There it is. Um, oh, and there's that Murano perfume bottle. I did pick that up. All right, so finished up at Flippy Unique Antiques. They were super nice. Great place. Um, nice little shop. A uh, good mix between antiques, vintage, and some handmade pieces, as well as refinished furniture, too. So definitely check them out out in Fulton, New York. So that's it for today. That's all I have for you. <laughs> but if you like this kind of content, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm now on Instagram. So come find me at Faded Love Vintage on Instagram. So it's Faded underscore Love underscore Vintage. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye.